Good morning, Rice Station Christian Church. It's such an honor to be able to come out today and talk to everyone concerning the Word of God. Hopefully, before long, we can all be gathered together once again in the church house here at Rice Station. And we look forward to that day. To begin our service today, we'll ask Brother Andrew to come and speak to us concerning the Lord's Supper. Good morning. I'm really glad that you could join us again this morning and uh, keep on doing this broadcast. I think it's awesome. Uh, Today, you just wanted to start off with a story uh, about losing something. Uh, A while back, I I just got a new dog. Her name's Dolly. She's a a great Pyrenees. She's a beautiful, awesome dog. Best dog I've ever had. um, I I always enjoy taking her down on my farm with me. Uh, She loves to jump in the creek and play in the creek and chase chase little animals and bugs, and she loves it, and I always try to take her with me. Well, whenever I'd first got her, she didn't really understand, you know, that she couldn't wander off. And one day we went, went down there, and I took her down there, and I, I kind of quit paying attention to her for a minute, and she wandered off, and I couldn't find her. And, you know, I, she's a very special dog to me. So, you know, we ended up looking and looking and looking. We spent several hours looking for her and never could find her and even had to keep searching for her into the night with, with lights uh, on, our, on our little four-wheeler. And, you know, thank goodness we finally eventually found her, but, but she was of value to me. I had to find Dolly. I had to make sure that she was okay. And, you know, this kind of reminds me of a parable that Jesus once told. And I'd like to read that for you. It's Luke fifteen three through 6. It says this, Then Jesus told them this parable, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Now I want you to know that you're worth more than, than a, a pet or, or a sheep or livestock You know, this morning, but you know this is kind of similar to how Jesus is our shepherd. Jesus cares for us and looks out for us. And the fact of the matter is that Jesus loves you. Jesus cherishes you uh, so much so that, you know, he's chasing you. And he died on a cross so that you can spend eternity in heaven with him if you choose to do so, if you choose him. You know, we need to prepare our hearts right now as we as we begin to partake of this meal. And, you know, I just want you to remember that, you know, Jesus' blood was shed, his body was broken, just because he was chasing after you. He valued you so much that he did this for you. That's how much he thinks about you. And you know, you're you're worth more than any lost item or, or lost lost commodity or lost livestock. You're worth more than that to Jesus. He loves you. Let's pray as we get ready for communion. God, I thank you for, for the day, Lord. I thank you that we can Come and we can do this uh, broadcast and we can reach people, Lord, even in this crazy time. And God, I just pray that, that people's hearts would, would be open to our message and listen. Lord, I just pray as we, as we begin to partake of this meal, I pray that you would help us to remember exactly what you did, Lord, at Calvary. You know, Jesus, you, you went to the cross, you, you had your body broken, your blood was shed, and you did it all with us in mind, God. You knew that that you had to do that for us to be able to have a chance of inheriting heaven, Lord. And you had each and every one of us in mind when you did it, Lord. And I I thank you so very much for doing that, Lord. Father, I just pray that you would go with us this week as we start a new week. Help us to be great people, great examples, uh, and to imitate Christ in everything that we say and do, Lord. I thank you so much for Jesus. And it's all this I ask in his name. Amen. Good morning once again. I'd like to welcome everyone out to the broadcast, and I want to encourage everyone who is listening to the broadcast to come out and worship and praise God with us here at Rice Station after all this coronavirus is over with because we'd love to have you as a part of the church here at Rice Station. We love the Lord and love to do the Lord's work, so be sure to come out and worship and praise God with us. When I was a little boy... Every weekend, it was a family tradition that on Saturday, we would go to my great-grandmother's house. And I tell you what, to all you church family of Rice Station, 
over the years, you're going to hear a lot, of, a lot of stories about the weekends at my grandmother's house. But every Saturday, we would go to my great-grandmother's house, and sometimes we would do chores for her. Sometimes we would run errands for her. And sometimes we would just sit around and enjoy my grandmother's company and listen to the stories of her life. And every Saturday, without fail, my great-grandmother would have a feast prepared for us. And when I say a feast, I really mean a huge feast. I used to say, Grandma, you prepare enough to feed an army. And we would all sit down and enjoy that meal together. You know, as the church here at Rice Station, we oftentimes share meals together, don't we? We have fellowship meals, we have church picnics, we have church fish fries, we feast on the Lord's Supper together and we feast on the word of God together and it's so important that we do that and we're going to do that today in a message titled breakfast with Jesus breakfast with Jesus you see we should feast on the word of God together and individually I mean all throughout the scriptures we're told to do so take for instance We're told to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. We're told to crave pure spiritual milk so that we can grow in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. And we're told, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to Ezekiel in the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 3. And we'll look at how feeding on the Word of God is described to the prophet Ezekiel by the Almighty God. Ezekiel 3, verses 1 through 4, says this, And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you, eat this scroll, then go and speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. He said to me, Son of man, eat the scroll I am giving you and fill your stomach with it. So I ate, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said to me, Son of man, go now to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. You see, Ezekiel was told to feed on the Word of God, to taste its goodness, to taste its sweetness, and to go share that with the house of Israel. And you see, that's what all of us Christians should do. We should feed on the Word of God, and we should feed on the Word of God, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday, but we should feed on the Word of God every day and grow in the knowledge thereof, and then share that knowledge with people out in this lost and dying world. This world is full of people who are living a life outside of Christ and who are in need of us to tell them that they need Jesus, that they need to taste that sweet honey of the Word of God and obey the Lord and have salvation. We need to feast on the Word. So with that in mind, if you would, turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 21. That's where our main text will be today in John chapter 21. Turn there in your Bibles or on your Bible app. And as you're turning there, I want to go ahead and point out the first thing I want to talk about. And from this text of John 21, we see that every word of God proves true. Every word of God proves proves true. John 21 verses 1 through 7 says this. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But the night, that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your nets on the right side of your boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul Uh, They were unable to haul the nets in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, 
it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. What an amazing moment we see right here. The disciples, they were out fishing, and they were about a football field length away from the, from the shore, and this man appears on the shore, and he's talking to them, and they don't realize who it is, but as we know from the scriptures there, it was Jesus. And Jesus says, you haven't called any fish? And they say, no. And then Jesus commands the very fish that he created to be in the spot where his disciples could catch them. And he says, cast your nets on the right side of your boat. And they do, and they catch so many fish. And in that moment, John looks at Peter and he says, it's the Lord. I'm sure that John said that because both John and Peter had a deja vu moment. I'm sure that their minds went back three years to Luke chapter 5. You see, in Luke chapter 5, we read about a time when Simon Peter is in his boat and Jesus comes and gets into the boat. And he says, Simon Peter, let us go out to deep water for a catch. And you can hear the doubt in Peter's words. He says, Master, we've been fishing all night and we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, we will. And they let out to deep water. And Simon Peter lets down the nets and they catch so many fish that the nets start to break. And they have to call for James and John to come and help put those fish into the boat. And Simon Peter falls before the Lord and he says, go away from me for I'm a sinful man. And at that moment, he called them to be fishers of men. You see, the Lord's words proved true in Luke chapter 5 that they would let out and find some fish. His words proved true in John 21 that the fish would be on the right side of that boat. His words proved true that he would die on the cross, this horrible death. And his words proved true that he would raise from the dead. His words always have and always will prove true. Why? Well, let's look at the, in the, at the words of Matthew chapter 24 in verse 35. There Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Isn't that a beautiful statement? Heaven and earth will pass away, but Jesus, the, a part of the Almighty God, His words will never pass away. You know, throughout the years, people have tried to destroy the Lord's written word. Some people have tried to ban it. Some people have tried to burn it. Some people have tried to outlaw part of it. But guess what? His word still stands. You see, people doing things like that goes all the way back to the Roman Empire. In 303 AD, the Roman Emperor Diocletian ordered that all Christians stop worshiping and that their scriptures be destroyed. But only 25 years later, the Roman Emperor Constantine order that 50 copies of the scriptures be made and they be paid for at the expense of the government. You see, it didn't work then. Now, there was a French atheist by the name of Voltaire who died in 1778. And he had this idea that he believed that Christianity would all fade away and go into the history books within a hundred years of his time. And he predicted that. He said within a hundred years Christianity will be gone. But only 50 years after his death, the Geneva Bible Society, they took a house and a printing press and made stacks of Bibles. You see, it didn't happen then and it won't happen now. Why? Because of what Jesus said. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Now through that verse, we once again see that his words always prove true because here we are some 2,000 years after the life of Christ and we are studying his word. Now a little side note to go along with this is that throughout the years, many people have tried to validate their own sins or validate their sinful lifestyles with various arguments. 
But the Word of God stands true. And the Word of God refutes all sin. I like the way the author and preacher Francis Chan says this. He says, whenever I read the Bible and I come across something that I disagree with, I must assume that I'm wrong. Now think about that. Whenever I read the Bible and come across something that I disagree with, I must assume that I am wrong. You see, that's how all of us Christians should be. That's how all people should be. Because His words always prove true. And in the end, we will be judged by the words of the Lord. So we see here in John chapter 21 that every word of God proves true. His words where those fish were. Prove true. Now, another lesson that I like to point out from John chapter 21 is this allow nothing to come between you and Jesus. Allow nothing, nothing to come between you and Jesus. Let's look back there in John 21 and read verses 7 through 14. And there the scriptures say this Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in a boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there, with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. They had breakfast with Jesus. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. You see, once Peter realized that this was Jesus, he would stop at nothing to get to Jesus as fast as he could. And lost soul or strayed soul, I want to encourage you, stop at nothing to get to Jesus as fast as you can because your soul's eternity depends on it. You see, it didn't matter to Simon Peter that there was a football field length of deep water between him and Jesus. That didn't matter. He was going to stop at nothing to get to Jesus. He was going to allow nothing to be between him and Christ Jesus. You know, this brings to my mind another event in the Scriptures that happened during Jesus' ministry. And this event happened in Matthew chapter 19, and we should all know this event very well. In Matthew 19, we read about that rich young man who comes to Jesus and wants to know how to have eternal life. And Jesus tells him, well, you have to obey the commandments. And that rich young man said, well, all these I have kept since my youth. And Jesus says, well, you lack one thing. And he says, go and sell all your possessions and give to the poor and come and follow me and you will have treasure in heaven. And the scriptures tell us that the young man went away sad because he had great wealth. You see, he allowed his wealth, he allowed his possessions to come between him and Jesus. But after this happened, right after the young man went away sad, Simon Peter had a question for Jesus. And let's look at that question, if you would, in Matthew chapter 19, verses 27 through 29. There the scriptures say, Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will be there for us? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, at the renewal of all things, When the Son of Man sit on His glorious throne, you who have followed Me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left house or brother or sister or father or mother or child or field for My sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit 
eternal life. Jesus is saying, Simon Peter, all those who have allowed nothing to come between me and them, all those who have put me above and before everything else in their life, all of them... All of you all will be blessed, and you'll be blessed in the end with eternal life. So how about you? How about you? Is there anything or or anyone between you and Jesus Christ, between you and serving the Lord like you should, between you and living for the Lord like there should? Is there anything that you're putting above or before the Lord? Well, if there is, then it's time to make a change. It's time to do like Simon Peter and jump out of the boat and get to Jesus as fast as you can and live a life unhindered by anything of this world. So from our breakfast feast with Jesus, we see that His words always prove true. And we see that we are to allow nothing to come between us and Jesus. We are to love Him above all. We are to have Him at the center of our life, at the center of everything that we do. We are to serve Him with all that we are. Now another observation that we see from John 21 is this. Jesus allows comebacks. Jesus allows comebacks. Isn't that good news? Jesus allows comebacks. Let's look back in our text there, our main text of John chapter 21. And we'll read verses 15 through 18. And there the scriptures say this. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And right there in that last verse, he was talking about Simon Peter's death, which would eventually come. But the disciples ate breakfast with Jesus on the shore. And that once again gives proof of Jesus' bodily resurrection because he was eating with his disciples on the shore. And then after eating with his disciples, Jesus turns his attention directly towards Simon Peter and he has this one-on-one conversation with Peter about his relationship with Simon Peter. And he asked Peter three times this one question, Do you love me? In verse 17 of our text said, Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him a third time. Well, of course Simon Peter was hurt that he asked him a third time because right then Simon Peter had another one of those deja vu moments. When his mind went back to that Thursday night when Jesus established the Lord's Supper and Simon Peter said, Oh Lord, if all others fall away on your account, I won't. And Jesus said, yes, Simon Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So that night after Jesus was arrested, Simon Peter followed at a distance and he came to the courtyard and people started saying, hey, you're one of Jesus' followers, Peter. You're a Galilean. You're one of his followers. And three times Peter denied him and the rooster crowed. And at that moment, Peter locked eyes with Jesus. And the scriptures say that he went outside and wept bitterly. In that moment, Simon Peter probably felt like he betrayed Christ in perhaps the worst way that he could possibly betray Christ. But notice, back in our main text, that each time that Peter asked Simon Peter if he loved him, Jesus gave him a mission, didn't he? Jesus said, Peter, feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. 
feed my sheep. Jesus, what Jesus is basically saying here is, Simon Peter, this isn't your end all. I love you and I will forgive you. You need to forgive yourself. You don't need to let your failure hold you down. You need to move forward and live out this mission. Feed my sheep. You see, for a little while, Simon Peter really thought this was his end all. He probably thought, well, I'm just going to go back to my fishing business, just like my father taught me, because I failed Jesus. But now he realizes it's not over. Right here, we see Simon Peter's comeback. He realizes that it's not over, that he's still got work to do for the Lord. And as we know, Simon Peter went on to preach that gospel message on the day of Pentecost, and about 3,000 were baptized into Christ. He went on to stand firm in the face of persecution and continue to preach Jesus. He went on to be a Bible writer. He wrote First and Second Peter, and then he made a major impact on the world for the Lord, all for God's glory and God's honor. You know what? I am so thankful that just like with Peter, Jesus still allows comebacks. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done or who you've done what with. You can come back to Jesus Christ and obey Him and serve Him and live for Him. He allows seconds and thirds and more comebacks. He's offering you a comeback today if you're a strayed soul. He's saying, come on back and feed and help serve my sheep, take care of my sheep, further the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can have a comeback. You see, that's one of the reasons that Jesus told the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. One of the reasons he told that parable is because he wants all strayed souls to come back to him. And look with me in Luke chapter 15 and verse 20. And there the scriptures say, So he got up, and this is the lost son, the prodigal son. He got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. Lost soul or strayed soul, I want you to know that the Lord's heart is filled with compassion for you. And he's offering you salvation. And the scriptures go on to say, And he ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. That's how the heavenly father welcomes all who need a comeback. Do you need to come back to Jesus Christ? The bottom line of our message today comes down to this. In our spiritual walk... May we be people who feast, who feast on the Word of God each and every day, knowing that His Word always proves true. It always has all throughout the years, and it always will. And He tells us in the end, we win, Christians. In the end, we win. We may suffer some right now in this world. We may face troubles and tribulations and anxieties and stresses. But in the end... We win. His word proves true. Remember, we need to have no barriers between us and Jesus Christ. If there's a barrier between us and Jesus, then we need to make a change and make sure there's nothing except a good relationship between us and the Lord. And remember, straight soul, he's offering you a comeback. Lost soul or strayed soul, I I want to ask you a question. And the question I want to ask you is the same question that Jesus asked Simon Peter. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Well, John chapter 14 and verse 15, Jesus says this. If you love me, you will obey what I command. 
If you love the Lord, then you're going to obey His commands. You're going to obey His word. You're going to live for Him. You see, to be in a saved relationship with Jesus Christ, to have all your sins forgiven, and to have heaven ahead, you've got to obey God's command. You've got to obey God's plan of salvation. Now, I go over that plan each week because it's so vitally important that we know God's plan of salvation, that we know how to be saved. First, we've got to hear the Word of God proclaimed. We've got to believe the Word of God that Jesus Christ came to this earth and that He died on the cross and that He was buried and that He rose again and that He went through all that so that we could have salvation. We must believe that. We must come forward repentant of our sins. We must confess before our fellow man. We don't have to confess every sin that we've ever committed. No, we have to confess that we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then we must, must be born again of the water and the Spirit. We must be baptized into Christ, burying that old person of sin and rising as a new person in Jesus Christ. And then we got to continue on to the end with faithful Christian living, serving the Lord All the way to the end. So lost soul or strayed soul, I want to ask you one last question. Do you love Jesus? Do you love the Lord? The one who went through all that pain so that we could have the gain of heaven. If you do, then I want to encourage you to obey him before it's eternally too late. And I want you to know that even though we're coming to you through this broadcast, I want you to know that you can still obey Jesus Christ. You can call me up on the phone, and I can meet you here at the church house. Everything's ready. We can baptize you into Christ. Don't let the things of this world and the excuses of this world and the excuses that you come up with keep you from Jesus Christ. Everything's ready if you need to be baptized into Christ. If you need to rededicate your life, just call me up on the phone. I can take your confession over the phone, and I can pray with you on the phone. Today's the day of salvation. Don't let this life pass you by without Jesus Christ, because I tell you what, eternity is too long to be wrong. Eternity is too long to be in a wrong relationship with the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you are so good. Father, we thank you for your beautiful, powerful word. We thank you for this lesson that we can draw from John 21, where we're reminded that your words always prove true, that we need to allow nothing to come between us and you, that we need to get to you as fast as we can, Father. And thank you for allowing comebacks. Father, during this time of the coronavirus where so many are suffering, I pray that you bless those who are suffering. I pray that you bless all the medical staff, the EMTs, the first responders. I pray that you uh, be with all of our leaders, the leaders here at Rice Station, the elders and deacons. And I pray that you be with Andrew. And I, I pray that you be with our state leaders and our national leaders, Father. I pray that you just help us and guide us. And Father, I pray at this time for every lost soul, every strayed soul that's listening to this broadcast, I pray that their hearts will be cut and that they realize they need to serve you before it's eternally too late. Father God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. And we pray all this in Christ Jesus' name. And amen.